Hello, YouTubers, friends, compatriots, bootlickers, shells, deaths, listeners, peasants, vassals, minions. I'm Useful Idiot. Welcome. And uh, as promised, uh, my second series of videos about Israel, uh, hopefully being uh, a moderate voice and being an eye-opener uh, to the realities of the Israeli state. And as I pointed out, and I have to point out in every video, uh, I am not an anti-Semite, and uh, criticizing Israel doesn't make anyone an anti-Semite. It has to do with a political philosophy known as Zionism. And Zionism is a political philosophy and ideology that dominates the state of Israel, and that is what the criticism is. And it's a criticism of the state that it has created as well. And I only criticize Israel uh, pretty much the same way I criticize uh, many aspects of my own uh, government, uh, not only its domestic policies, but its foreign policies and um, its social engineering and uh, every aspect of even how uh, elected officials come to power and the very nature of power. But anyway, uh, I digress. I just feel a need to bring that up because a lot of uh, Israeli critics have pointed out to me that I feel this need to defend myself uh, right off the bat uh, and that somehow that makes me guilty. And I say that's actually quite true and uh, when you suggest that maybe you should look in the mirror. But anyway, let's go into the new uh, uh, story I want to bring about uh, the economic stranglehold that uh, Israel has on Gaza. And I already did a uh, video about the blockade and all the items that are not allowed in or out of Gaza, uh, putting an economic stranglehold on the uh, Gaza, all these Gaza industries. And I recommend that video, as I should. I'll attach it below. But uh, let's look at another way uh, they have an economic stranglehold, and that's by using banks. And uh, as of April 2014, um, because of the uh, negotiations uh, breaking down yet again, with the creation of the Fatah Hamas uh, unity government, and that's, that's what this is all about. And let's remember that. That's what all this is about. That's what the current uh, uh, strikes on Gaza are. Um, is the Fatah Hamas uh, unity government. So when negotiations broke down, that unity government uh, was created. The Israeli Central Bank refused to service its own currency. And then, uh, I have to remind you, this is unheard of uh, in the international community. And uh, Palestinian banks were no longer allowed to send their surplus Israeli currency to the bank. In uh, Gaza, like the West Bank and Jerusalem and all the other so-called Palestinian territories are required to use the Israeli currency, the shekel. And, um, and this has a lot of effects. Uh, and we're going to take a quick, quick peek at the uh, Gaza uh, economy to see uh, what that does. Uh, for one thing, it disrupts the flow of electricity, petroleum, gas, and gas, as well as damages banks uh, when you restrict these uh, currency flows and these transfers between these banks. I also want to point out, it's interesting that uh, if central banks can declare they, they have to be independent of politics around the globe, like, for example, the Federal Reserve. <laughs> Sorry for my production values. Uh, including the Federal Reserve, they declare that they have uh, political independence. Well, here we see the, uh, obviously, the Israeli central bank doesn't have uh, political independence, but far from it. Um, it's actively involved in economic warfare. And uh, let me remind you that as, uh, Mr. Fisher, who used to head the Israeli Central Bank, is now second in command of the Federal Reserve for the United States. And uh, I'm sure the Federal Reserve continues to be equally independent. So, uh, so anyway, the Palestinian economy is six billion dollars, and uh, six billion dollars. And uh, they pay 80 million shekels a month in, for electricity to Israel. They pay 600 million shekels a month to, for petroleum from Israel. And they pay 25 million shekels a month uh, for, help, for health care from Israel. So that's pretty interesting that uh, even though they're enslaved and they're in an open-air prison, um, the Gaza is providing a, a huge amount of uh, revenue for the Israeli state. While well, the Israeli state uh, economically sucks Gaza dry. So an interesting relationship, uh, like parasite and host. And uh, prior to Oslo, 
uh, agreements. 120,000 uh, Palestinians work in Israel, and that's been whittled down quite a bit. Now it's 47,000 Palestinians who are legally able to enter and work in Israel, and they estimate something like 15,000 uh, work there illegally. And you have to get permits through the military, no surprise there. And uh, But all the Israeli currency uh, goes back uh, into Palestine and then back into Israel. And another interesting uh, relationship uh, to show the economic dependence uh, on their colonial masters, uh, the Palestinians import 85% of their goods and services from Israel. And they sell 80% of their imports to Israel. So once again, what an interesting relationship. If you put this, put this in combination with my video about the uh, blockade items and the things that aren't allowed in Gaza, uh, it's, it's a staggeringly mind-boggling, uh, 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 incongruent uh, economic relationship as any that could be created. And um, because of this, uh, this relationship and this uh, uh, clampdown by the Israeli banks on uh, Palestine, of course, they've discussed uh, creating their own currency or actually even using the dollar. And uh, uh, part of the uh, occupation is rules, regulations, and restrictions as well. And that's, uh, I think, the overall uh, theme here of this, this video. Um, this is economic occupation as well. This is a colonial relationship, and that's another thing that's important uh, to to get out of this uh, uh, this uh, economic examination is that occupation uh, in, in this colonialism is at the very core of this relationship. So to characterize it as these uh, terrorists uh, relationship to this Jewish state. Um, is a mischaracterization. It's a it's a colonial situation. Uh, uh, settlers came, uh, conquered the native population, occupied the land, displaced them. It, it is a classic colonial uh, uh, scenario, and uh, certainly uh, an examination of this uh, uh, economic situation bears that out. And um, to get back uh, from a long tangent, um, this. Uh, uh, no longer serving serving the uh, Palestinian currency by the Israeli or the Israeli currency from Palestine, and the Israeli central bank, um, it disrupts uh, paying payment of services and suppliers, and that's why uh, I mentioned earlier that it disrupts flow of electricity, petroleum, and gas. You can have damages on banks, and uh, obviously on a day-to-day -day basis in uh, Gaza, um, you would find a lot of. Uh, uh, problems just conducting daily business. And uh, Pal Palestinian businesses uh, weren't able to make electronic transfers either, so banks would have to arrange everything in cash, which of course uh, dealing with uh, cash when you live in an occupation zone is near impossible. So uh, this is uh, economic warfare uh, on the highest level and another part of the occupation and another part of uh, Israeli neocolonialism. I'm a useful idiot. Don't you be one too. I want to talk to my set director.